Good afternoon, everyone. We'll start. Um, my name is Alex Radford. I'm a, an English solicitor and Spanish lawyer, and I'm joined today with my colleagues from Legal Services in Spain. We basically, uh, it's an online uh, legal operation. We're, we're based in Spain, but we've also set up uh, GetSpanishResidency.com, InheritingSpanishAssets.com, uh, UrNIENumber.com, and we are working on YourSpanishWill.com. Um, and basically, the, the idea be behind legal services in Spain is that there'll be legal products online for people to, to purchase. I mean, we came about the idea basically probably about this time last year as a result of, of Brexit uh, and lots of clients contacting us about residency questions. So um, rather than us kind of keep on repeating ourselves, we put a lot of information on the GetSpanishResidency.com website. So you know, after this session, have a look at, have a look at that, that website. And if you've got any other questions, please do come back to us. That's what we're here for. And on, on, the, line, on the line today, we've got um, my colleague, Patricia, who uh, is a Spanish abogada. She works with us in, in the office. We've got Melanie, who uh, works with us in the office as well. We've got um, Anthony Poole, who basically is from uh, GPS. And he provides um, quotes for our clients applying for residency from various insurance companies for, for, for medical cover, and then they provide insurance for cars, houses, etc. We've also got Monica. Um, Monica's uh, Spanish abogada, and she's um, really been helping us uh, immensely on the Spanish application process for residencies. And we've got my colleague, um, Debbie, as well there. So that, that's the team. And also we thank uh, Alison and Meehan from uh, Costa Women for helping us to arrange this uh, via Zoom. So basically what, what we're going to do, we've, we've had some questions through, so we're going to go through those questions and, and then we will basically uh, answer those. And if you've got any other questions, there's a chat box uh, which you can put your question in and then we'll answer that question. But we really do want to try and make this as interactive as possible. So feel free to, to ask any other questions. First of all, though, you know, an update as to where we are now. So basically, yesterday, the Spanish government approved an extension of this state of alarm until the, the 25th of May. So, so basically, that means that people cannot f travel freely around Spain and their rights are restricted. So, for example, as we were talking earlier, if, if, you, if, you, like going, you know, if you like doing sports, you can get up at six o'clock in the morning, but you've got to be home by, by 10 o'clock. You can't go out running with a club or cycling with the club, you've got to get back by 10 o'clock and it's, it's basically individual people doing, doing sports. Um, dog walkers can go out for up to an hour, but they've got to stay within a kilometer of their house. And then um, that's basically um, from, from, from 10 to 12, um, the over 65s are allowed out. They're allowed out for a couple of hours. And then from basically 12 till uh, eight, um, basically families allowed out one mem one member one adult member of the family and then two children are allowed out so that's generally ge the general rules that have been introduced across Spain and then the government has int introduced four different phases where all all of Spain is currently on phase zero at the moment and each two weeks as the pandemic uh, recoveries Im improve here in Spain then then basically we'll be we're moving to the next phase so we're hoping that, um, for example, Andalusia, uh, remember there's 17 autonomous regions in Spain. So the, the worst hit autonomous regions are the Madrid uh, region and the, and the kind of greater metropolitan area of Madrid and, and, and Barcelona as, as the kind of main, main congested cities. Um, we are expecting that from the 11th of May, uh, Andalusia may move out to, to phase one. Other regions have already gone out to, to phase one, such as La Gomera and El Hierro, which are Canary Island, uh, Canary, Canary Islands, and they've, they've started to have a lot more freedom. So basically, we've got four phases, which will be opened up to different regions and different provinces in Spain as we progress. International borders, as we know, are closed at the moment. We don't have a date when that, those will be open. We've heard that basically we international travellers might not be able to come to Spain in July and August if they haven't got a residency card. Um, 
although there is there is there are conversations ongoing that if you own a Spanish property or you've you've got a long term rent that you may be allowed out, but sorry allowed back to Spain. But 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 at the moment we've got clients who've got residency cards, own property, and they are being allowed to travel backwards and forwards between the UK and Spain. That's the position at the moment. Obviously, Spain has been terribly hit by by the uh, by the virus, and you know thankfully at long last we're beginning to see the the. Uh, Spain coming out of this awful situation. It's been a human tragedy as far as deaths are concerned, um, but unfortunately we now believe that there will be uh, you know, a pretty deep recession uh, from, from end of March, so from mid-March to end of March and from uh, you know, the month of May, we've seen nearly um, a million people be, have, have lost their jobs and unemployment has shot up in Spain to 3.8 million. So it's a very sorry situation. And there's a lot of people still confined at home, not working, and we're waiting for their job situation to 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 kind of to improve, uh, and that will probably improve when the state of alarm rises. So we've got the human tragedy of the viruses, but then we've got the financial tragedy tragedy that's coming along. So so Spain's going to be in this for some time, um, and we we all hope, uh, all of us who are on the call. Uh, hope that the you know the international borders are open as quickly as possible. Time is right, and when it's safe. So one of the first questions we've asked, and and I'll I'll just I'll answer this because I'm I've still got the still got the word, and basically is you know why do I need Spanish residency? Well, basically any person, um, particularly U European citizens moving to Spain and spending more than three months in Spain are obliged to personally apply for Spanish residency to be able to continue to live in Spain. The, the application must be submitted three months from the date of entry into Spain, and this will authorise you to live and work in Spain. Spanish residency for EU citizens is currently a green card without a photo, and that differs to those of non-EU citizens, which is basically a pink card or a photo card. And the procedure and the documents and the amounts that you require in the bank vary depending on whether you're an EU citizen or a non-EU citizen and they also then depend um, on, on the area that you're applying for in Spain okay one of the consistent things about Spain is its inconsistency I'm afraid so a police station in Fuengirola where you might live sorry where, where you live in Fuengirola you'd have to go to the police station in Fuengirola to apply for residency they may have a different requirement compared to um, the, the town hall of Torre Vieja up in Alicante Nationals from other countries can enter Spain on business or tourism for a period of no more than three months. And there I'm talking about citizens from Canada, the States, New Zealand, or Australia. We're going to make it a little, you know, as interactive as possible. And I'll pass, pass you over to, to Debbie now. Um, as I understand, we've had, we've had some questions through and Debbie will ask those. Hello. Um, this is a question for Patricia. It's... Um... If I spend less than six months in Spain, do I still have to become a Spanish resident? Uh, yes, if you spend less than six months, but more than three months in Spain, then you have to apply for to become a Spanish resident. However, as uh, you intend to spend less than six months in Spain, you will not become a Spanish tax resident and you will not have to present Spanish tax returns on worldwide assets and income. When do I become a Spanish tax resident? It, well, um, if you spend then more than six months, uh, which is 183 days in a calendar year, and the calendar year in, in Spain from, uh, and tax year, it's from 1st of January to 31st of December, um, then you have the obligation to become a Spanish tax resident. Um, so, from the year after you become a Spanish tax resident and between April and June, you will have to present your Spanish tax return on your worldwide assets and income. Um, once you have obtained your residency card, uh, we can register yourself with the Spanish taxes authorities. Um, and if you were registered as a Spanish tax resident on the 1st of August um, 2019, uh, as you will have spent less than six months on talking about 2019 in Spain, uh, then you will become a Spanish tax resident in 2020. So um, it's after you have spent six months in Spain. Then you will have to present your Spanish tax returns for 2020 between April and June 
2021. Okay, thank, thank you, Patricia. So ju just so everyone's aware, it's really, really important point to, to, to grasp right from the beginning. If you spend more than three months in Spain, then you have to become a Spanish resident. But if you, you only become a Spanish tax resident, if you spend more than six months in Spain. So more than six months in Spain in a calendar year means you become a Spanish tax resident. If you're in, if in Spain for less than six months, then you're not a Spanish tax resident, which means you don't pay tax in Spain on worldwide assets and income. So if you're not, if you're not sure about the situation, whether you're gonna to move to Spain, lock, stock and barrel, then I would suggest you stay under the six months, 183 days, and you don't become a Spanish tax resident. But when you are ready to become a Spanish tax resident, you apply for the you apply for their card, and then we have to register you with 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 the um, with the Spanish tax authorities. Okay, um, Melanie, over to you. Okay, this is a uh, a question for for Monica. Um, how long, if I apply for residency the first time, how long does the residency last? Okay, thank you, Melanie. Um, when you first apply for Spanish residency. It is for a period of five years. When you have been a resident for five consecutive years, you can apply for a permanent residency. Uh, and then after 10 years, total 10 years, you can apply for a Spanish nationality. Another question, Monica, yes. is so when I apply for, for Spanish residency for the first time, how, how long does it take to get that residency in Spain? How long does it take? Yeah, uh, when you have all the documents ready, you know, uh, for the resident applications, and you have completed the appropriate, you know, application forms, including the, the application fee, uh, you are able to 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 attend the resident appointments. This is the moment, and you of course before you had to book uh, online appointments. This is the only way to have the the, the appointments by online. So when you have everything, uh, all the documents and everything together, you attend residency and you know, it's quite quickly, they give you the green card in this moment. The procedure before to prepare the documents depend on the, you know, uh, the type of residency you apply for, depend on the regions, depend on many things. But when you have everything ready, you know, the, the procedure is quite, quite uh, uh, quick and easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And, and, and Monica, just, just to, 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 to clarify that, because so basically once you've got the residency application documents ready, yes, you submit that and you, want to, you, you apply for the on online uh, appointment, you get the online appointment, and you submit all the documents. But part of the documents, some of the documents um, mean, mean that basically you've, you, can, you, should, you should be looking at starting the residency process earlier. So it could take two to three months to prepare the documents. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. Okay, totally okay. agree. <laughs> Two or three months, <laughs> yeah, could be. Yeah. If I'm applying for residency, do I have to apply in person? Yes, it's totally, yeah, it's totally uh, up to apply in person, because, you know, the police man had to, or need to, to see you, you know, face to face personally, and you had to, to get all the original paper, you know, but of course, when you are there, you know, somebody uh, from the law firms accompanies, you know, the person to, to be confident in this meeting. Okay, Alex, um, I've got a question for you. Um, what are the benefits of applying for Spanish residency before the 31st of December this year, so 2020? Okay. So great, it's a great, um, it's a great question, mm. Debbie, and, and basically one that every single Brit person uh, is asking us. And uh, basically, we, you know, we're very aware that at the moment people can't come to Spain to apply for residency. But as I said earlier, they can start the residency application. They can start to collate the documents and get ready so that when the borders do open, which we're hoping will be maybe September, October, maybe earlier, then we can just book the online appointment and, and, and we'll have all the documents ready. But basically, the benefits of applying for Spanish residency for British people before the 31st of December is that Spanish residency will make it much easier for you to enter into Spain next year after Brexit. And you won't be limited to just spending 90 days in a 180 day period. And you won't need to apply for a visa each time you want to come in and out 
of, of Spain. Now we are expecting that the Spanish police stations, and we don't know this for sure yet, they will start to open across Spain um, as the phases de-escalate. So, so we may find, I know for example, Marbella Town Hall were carrying out tests on their staff today to see if there were any members of staff who were asymptomatic would pass the virus on without, without knowing it. And, 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 and those tests are going on. So, so we're hoping that the authorities in the town halls will come back uh, into action on a limited basis next week. That's what we're hoping. Okay. And also, if um, I'm a UK citizen, will my Spanish residency still be valid after the 31st of December of this year? Yeah. So, yeah, providing you've obtained your Spanish residency before the 31st of December, which obviously is the end of the transition period as set out in the withdrawal agreement, yes, you will be allowed to come back into Spain and that Spanish residency will last, um, as, as Monica have said, for up to, up to five years. So it's very important if you know if we can, if you can, that uh, the residency is applied for and obtained before the end of the um, transition period this year. Something, something to bear in mind, and and I I raised this uh, in a uh, we had a webinar with the British ambassador a couple of weeks ago, and and basically the transition period for Europeans in the UK, so in, in so you know Europeans are going through the same uh, process that we're going through. Uh, in the UK, and basically, um, in in the UK, Spaniards can apply for residency up until the 31st of June of next year. And I mentioned this to the British ambassador and said that it seemed unfair that that Spaniards can apply for settled status in the UK until next year, June next year, but Brits in Spain can only um, wait, uh, can only apply, you know, between now and December. And it was a point that they're aware of, but the the answer was. You know, the Brits have had enough time to apply for Spanish residency this year. However, I do think if there's enough of us who who can write to the British consul, the British ambassador in Spain, advising that you haven't been able to come out to Spain to apply for residency, then they may um, put some more pressure on the Spanish authorities and hopefully extend that period. That's the only thing I can think of at the moment. You know, at the moment basically the end of the transition period this year is, is the date when we've got to apply for residency. But I'm hoping that maybe, you know, maybe clutching at straws here, maybe there might be an opportunity if we all kind of email British consul, British ambassador, and, and, and notify them of this issue, they might have an extension. If you apply for residency, you know, say now, and um, you get it in place, which entitled you to stay permanently in Spain for five years, has it, can you leave Spain, come back to the UK? Because in my situation, I'm in the UK at the moment, in my situation, there's going to be a period of transition before I'm fully ensconced in um, Andalusia. So yep. I want to make trips back and forward. Do I have to, am I obliged to stay a, stay a specific period in Spain? I mean, you don't have to stay for five years uninterrupted or anything like this. Basically, Paul, once you've got your, if you if, do you own a property in Spain? Yes, I do. Yes, yes. Yeah. So basically, with with and, and where do you own that? Where? Where's the property located? Yeah, it's uh, in the village of Plopos near uh, Montreal. Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So 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 so, so ba basically, Paul. Um, yes, you you can apply for residency now when, when, as soon as you can come back to Spain, yeah. and then you can travel backwards and forwards. You okay? Can. okay. The fact that you've the fact that you've got um, you've got a, a property that. That makes it easier so so basically people who are renting properties need to rent for more than 12 months people who own property can show their deed um and then and then you know we can have a separate conversation with you offline about about all the documents that are required and the yep. amount of money that will be required in your bank account oh, to apply for residency because it varies from region to region so okay. we're you know we're talking montreal is granada um yeah. and we we have a, we have completed some residencies in the granada province mm -hmm. so we can come back to you on that but the, the answer to the question is yes you can mm -hmm. as soon as you can apply for it and you can come backwards and forwards and in fact some of the clients we've acted for as i said have used their residency and they've come backwards and forwards between the uk during the lockdown i see okay okay but you don't anticipate as you said earlier that the, the border's probably going to remain closed until maybe September, October, whatever. So, I mean, coming out to Spain next week from the UK is just not, it's not tenable, is it, at the moment? There's, there's no, um, no, I mean, no point of entry and they would possibly quarantine you for two weeks anyway. <laughs> 
that, that, I mean, that we, we're not we're not aware of that happening at no. the moment. I must confess. Okay. Um, but the, the borders, you know, they're not very few flights are coming in. So there are flights coming in, but yeah. it's only I think they're only letting people into Spain who have got resident residency mm -hmm. and they they can yeah. show that they own a property. I see. OK, OK. Um, just one other question, if I may. Um, initially applying for just straight residency so I could actually live permanently in Spain. Um, but I'm planning to run a business out there, B&B um, &B guest house type setup. Um, but yeah. again, this is going to be um, some way in the future, up to a year possibly. So is it easy to get a standard residency to, to live in Spain and then become a tax resident after that? Is, is, it, is it easy to make that, 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 yeah. that change? It is, in, in, okay. in effect, yeah. Okay. So you, okay. you, 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 um, you can apply for the residency now. And then yeah. as and when you're ready to um, lift off with your new business venture, yeah. then, then you can uh, register a self-employed person. Yeah. yeah. And, and, that, and then you pay X amount of euros per month. I think it starts at 50, 60 euros a month. Uh, yeah. So you basically yeah. become self-employed right. and, and that will provide you with health cover. So um, I see, right. Because you would be in the Spanish tax system. So correct. it's a bit yeah. like paying a national insurance contribution, a, a kind correct. of? Correct, yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay, thanks, Alex. That's brilliant. That that clarifies uh, an important point for me. Thank you. Okay, no problem. All right, a pleasure. Alex, I don't know if you can hear me. I know you can't necessarily see me. Um, I can. I can hear you definitely. Yeah. Jolly good. Um, on a related subject, I'm in the process of um, my husband and I are living in Marbella at the moment. We kind of got got obviously caught here in the in the lockdown, um, but we normally try to spend six months of the year here and then back in the UK for six months. Um, yeah. But now we wish to be more permanent in Spain. Yeah. So I've started on the, the Padron and we have started other systems with our lawyer to, for the registration. What I'm being advised to do is tax registration or tax resident as well as police resident. Now, the thing is, I've taken out medical insurance so that we can do this. But yeah. effectively, in October of this year, I will be um, a UK pensioner. I will have reached the age of 66 and I will have a UK pension, which means I'm entitled to also an S1. If I go ahead with my, because I'm obviously in Spain, I don't need to wait for the borders to open to go for my final appointment. If uh, I go to do the residence, finalise my residency before that date. Is the S1, A, would I be entitled to get an S1 because I'm no longer a UK tax resident? Uh, I know I'm still entitled to my pension, but would I be able to get the S1? Um, and then obviously be able to have state health cover. Yeah, well, Mel, do you want to answer that one on the S1? Yeah, on the on the S1, um, what you will need to do is you'll need to contact the overseas health team, which is the NHS one in the UK, and you will be able to, they'll run through a series of questions with you, and they will tell you there and then on the phone if you are eligible to have the transfer of benefits from the UK to Spain. And if you are, then what they will do, they will send your S1 certificate to you at your Spanish address. It can only go to a Spanish address. And uh, that will take 14 days. You can then, once you get that, then you can, you can actually register that with the Social Security. Um, and then when you get the letter from the Social Security, you can then go to your local health centre to register at your local health centre. But if you take out, I mean, maybe this is a question for, for Anthony, but if you, you will need uh, to have private medical uh, insurance to obtain your residency if you don't have the S1, otherwise they will reject it because effectively then they, the Spanish healthcare system do, you know, they don't want you to depend on their, their healthcare system. So once you've taken out that private medical insurance, it will be for a minimum of 12 months, which is the requirement for the residency. 
So I doubt you can, uh, you can't cancel that private medical cover. I was, uh, the reason I was asking is the thing that I'm concerned about is let's say, for example, I had my residency tax and police residency confirmed here in September or August or something. And then I had the conversation with the, the NHS um, helpline in the UK. Yeah. And they asked me if, if, I'm just wondering if one of the questions is, are you currently um, a tax resident in Spain or a, you know, a, or a resident in Spain, in which case they wouldn't give me an S1. If you, if you answer the question to say that your main residence is in the UK, then they won't give you an S1. And this right. comes back to the, the, the fact that when you first apply for your residency, you're, you're applying, let's say, it comes back to the less than six months, more than three months, which you, you are, you're, non, you're a non-tax resident in Spain. So therefore your main residence is still in the UK. Therefore you do not, you know, the S1, you're not transferring your benefits, your, your UK, your, your health uh, service benefits in the UK to Spain. Now, when you then, if you actually want to become a tax resident in Spain, so you're actually spending more than 183 days in Spain per calendar year, then yes, then you will, that's when you are eligible to the S1 form. But you will, I've actually been through those questions with the, uh, with the overseas uh, healthcare team. They're very, very friendly. Um, and it will be a series of questions and it's, it's quite quick just to ask uh, whether you're eligible or not. But the key, the key thing will also be is as well, like, you, like you've said, is when, you be, when you're over 65 to actually well, I mean, what, to be eligible for, for the transfer of benefits of the S1 because when you're receiving your pension, your UK pension, state pension. My husband and I... Um the house that we have, the property that we own uh, in Spain, is actually in my name. But yeah. he will be, at the moment, he's not being able to start the residency procedure because he's taking part in a medical trial in the UK. Right. So he, in order to be able to continue doing that, and if we tried to transfer it over here, he, the drugs that he requires would be about 1,600 euros a month. So we obviously couldn't afford that. Um, so he is looking to perhaps do that towards the end of the trial at the end of the year after I've already become resident. But of course, at that point, he will not be owning a property in Spain. Will that impact whether he will be given uh, residency or not? If you're so so in Marbella, I mean, you said you mentioned that you're going through the residency process at the moment. So, so, so your your husband would have to show um, financial resource, sufficient financial resources through through bank statements, basically. Well, well, have we got? Whilst we're just before we move on to our next question, has anyone else got any other questions? Yes. Um, just asking, we, we uh, part way through our residency, we were 10 days away from our appointment. Uh, the lockdown happened, we decided not to come over to Spain and, th and then the lockdown happened, we couldn't have gone anyway. We're now in a difficult position because we've both got pre-existing conditions, can't see when we're going to get back there. How likely is this extension into next year? Um, well, I, I mean, it's slim at the moment, Pam, but... Um, I think the authorities are very aware that from you know from March until maybe September October six months would have been taken out of this year when people would have applied for residency. So we 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 might see an extension, but you know, it, it, it's it, we we need to we need to put pressure on the British government and you know write to your MP, um, contact the British ambassador, um, talk talk to um, talk to the Foreign Office. Um, we're going to write to Pedro Sanchez, the Prime Minister of Spain, about this. So it's something, so th something, something we're going to raise, but obviously I, I, we, ca we can't guarantee it. But um, it does seem to me a, to be a, a little bit unfair that, um, you know, one, first of all, the requirements are, you know, two, three, four, two or three months of bank statements. And if people 
didn't manage to apply for residency in March and they and the borders are open up in say September October they mm. might not have enough time to apply so that, that's why it's really important to, to you know to have all the documents in place you know keep them up to date um, we'll we'll keep you up to date Pam as a, as a registered client of legal services in Spain and get Spanish residency.com we'll keep you updated with the um, with the movements from the, from the Spanish um, Spanish government as well was one other very quick question uh, we, we we've now got an apartment we're renting per month in Marbella which we can't go to possibly for a year I hear that landlords might be extending offer, offering extensions uh, to clients have you heard that well I mean it all depends on the, the landlord's circumstances um, it's certainly worth maybe having a conversation with the landlord explaining your situation to them and asking them for an extension for a discount on your on your rental contract there's no legislation in place other for other than for very vulnerable people um, who are actually all living living in their properties already so that they don't get evicted from their, their properties if they can't afford to pay the rent that that's the only real legislation that there is in place at the moment but nothing nothing for for, for people in your situation i'm afraid uh, we applied for s1 in january and got it immediately it was a very quick process as mel said uh, we did say that UK was our, our permanent residence and we still got it. Can I just comment on that? Because uh, dare I say it depends who you spoke, speak to in the, S, in the S1T, in the overseas team there, because I had somebody else um, and they, they, got, uh, they got it declined as well because they were also asking if they have their pensions transferred to, to, to Spain as well, their pension payments. So um some people have been declined the s1 so on 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 that basis as well um yes i have a question um for uh, from somebody who is already resident in spain um so um, the question is if, if i am a resident in spain will i have to update my resident card to a tie or tie card from january 2021 um the question is for monica Yes, thank you, Patricia. <laughs> Nothing has been officially confirmed as yet. However, Spain is likely to introduce the TIE. Uh, you know, the TIE is the uh, uh, Sporting Identification Card. So this, this uh, green card could be replaced for the TIE. Um, but we are not sure, we are not confirmed these positions, but in that case, you will need to apply for it in person, complete an application form, pay the application fee, and arrange an appointment. And the new tip card will have a photo and fingerprint on. Um, so, another question. Can I be resident in the UK and in the Spain? Um, because what happens if you apply for the Spanish residency? Um, I, I, the question is if the thought is you could only be resident in one country but yeah so, so patricia basically yeah, people can be resident in in two places it's whether or not is what you can't be is you can't be tax resident in two places so um so it's important to highlight that the first time you apply for a spanish residency it'll be for a temporary residence and it will be valid for five years and you will either be registered as a non-tax resident or a tax resident so less than through six months less less than six months more than six months um and non-tax residents have to submit the non-residence income tax returns the year after purchase so if you own a property in spain and you bought it last year then you have to submit a non-residence income tax this by the end of december this year that's something that actually patricia can help you out with and um if you rent your property as well you have to submit quarterly returns okay uh monica mm -hmm. Yes, this is a, a, a question for you that somebody's asked, what documentation do I actually need to apply for residency? Yeah, the documentation very depends upon the type of residency you are applying for. Uh, and it depends as well for the personal circumstances. Uh, it's not the same for employers, for example, employees with autonomous expense or dependent or pensioner so can change uh, but the most important thing you have to prove uh, is two points is to have sufficient, uh, sufficient financial resource for you and your family in case you have a family 
And as well, you have to prove you have a private medical cover if you are not entitled to access the Spanish healthcare system. So the documentation vary depending upon the type of residency and even also vary depending upon of the regions of Spain. As you say, Melanie and Alex as well, it's different if you apply in Alicante, Valencia, Andalusia, it can change a lot, the documentation, you know. Uh, and most of the, you know, uh, there is some common documents like, uh, for example, to be in the padrons, um, even to you know the police stations usually to ask for uh, documents uh, translate in Spanish language. So sometimes the you know the applications of residents increase the expense of this. But very important is to be updated about the, the, the change of every police station because the requirements, as I told I told you before, can change. So to be very careful to be up to date with the changes because the application could be rejected. So this is important. Uh, I, I would like to, to say to the clients because it's important things, but not to, not, not to find surprise, you know? Okay, this is a healthcare question for Anthony. Um, it's, the question is, can I take any type of private health insurance policy no, when, when you're going for residency, Debbie, you need to have a fully comprehensive um, medical cover. So effectively, that has to cover you for hospitalization, emergency, and surgery. And of course, you've got to be careful that it doesn't have any co-payments attached to it as well. That's, that's what is needed for residency applications. Okay, that's brilliant. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, another question for you, Anthony. Oh. Can I pay monthly for my health insurance for residencia? No, is, is the simple answer. You need to pay for it um, a year up front. Um, and then they will send you the specific certificate that is needed for the residencia application. What's important to note on that is once you've paid for it up front for the year, when you go into the second year, you can then go on to monthly payments. But to answer your question, no, it's got to be paid for in the first year up front. A Another question one. for Alex. What is the legal definition of Spanish residency? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Debbie, for that one. Um, right, let's get this right. Um, basically, an individual is a resident of Spain when they meet any of the following three requirements. One, that they remain in Spain for more than 183 days in a calendar year. So January to December, uh, space is, Spain is the, the base of their main economic activity or business interest. So basically that this is where they, 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 they earn their income. And someone who travels a lot could still be considered a resident if their spouse and minors habitually live and reside in Spain and are financially dependent on that person. So just because you might not spend 183 days, but your wife and children do, you could still be considered to be resident. Um, basically, Andy, as you know, I'm under the age of 65. Oh, yeah. how, how could I just, you know, <laughs> how, how could I obtain medical cover, Anthony? Okay. Um, Alex, if you're under the age of 65, which you, you claim you are, and you're not entitled to access the Spanish healthcare system, then to get your Spanish residency, you will need to take out medical cover for at least um, 12 months. Once you've been a Spanish resident for a year, so that's, that's your 12 months used up, you can then start to pay into the Convenio Especial, which means you pay to access the Spanish health system. Okay, okay, thanks for that, Anthony. Now, yeah. I haven't, but just in case I did, Anthony, yes. if I had a pre-existing health condition, yep. how badly is that gonna affect the, the cost of this annual insurance policy? It doesn't. What, what happens is that if you've got pre-existing conditions, your, your pre-existing conditions are actually excluded from, from the cover that you're paying for the year. The, uh, they'll look at it and they'll say, is it a condition that you know about? So your pre-existing condition you're aware of, and then that's a straight exclusion. There's also other parts that say, if, if you're diagnosed with something within the first three months, six months, and nine months, those will be classified as pre-existing. So if you have a pre-existing condition, it doesn't put up the cost. However, 
if you need treatment for that, then you will personally have to pay for it. But, and that, that, Anthony, that still won't affect my application for residency. So, because you, earlier you talked about you need a fully comprehensive policy with no exclusions and no co-payments. Um, just because I've got a medical condition excluded, that doesn't mean I, my, my, med, my application for residency, no. if I'm under the age of 65, will fail. You can definitely have exclusions on, the, on your medical cover, which will give you residency. So exclusions make no difference. Okay, good. Okay. You know, you've got to look at the, the health companies out there. They have a risk assessment, Linda, and some companies will accept a higher level of risk than others. So unfortunately, you will come, you will find that. You'll find that on cancer, diabetes, type one, some, some of the medical cover, medical insurance companies just don't want to touch it. They say that you're too high a risk. So you're quite right. And that's, that, that's exactly the same in the UK, anywhere in the world, dealing with any health insurance companies. They all operate on the same system. It's, it's by no means unique to Spain. But it does happen, Linda. You're 100% correct. Yes. Um, Alex, I have a question for you. Uh, yeah. What's the S1 form? Okay, Patricia, this is, this is a form that if you, we, we've, we've touched on it already, but if you, if you live in Spain and receive an exportable UK pension or another exportable benefit, you may currently be entitled to, to state healthcare in Spain paid for by the UK. And you will have to apply for a certificate known as um, Form S1, or S1 certificate from the Social Security Office in Newcastle in Spain. And if you have a look, on our website in the FAQs, um, we've got the, what it is for Miss One and how to apply for that. And if you are basically, um, if you're eligible for that form because you're over the age of 65 or 66, but you've got a younger partner or spouse, a spouse, then they could be added as a beneficiary. Um, so that, that's really quite important to bear in mind. So when you're applying for that form S1, think about who, who needs it, um, and who could potentially be entitled to it. Ask a question about the Padron, please. Certainly, certainly. Is this independent of the residency application? You need to be resident on the Padron, I believe. Do you take care of that, or is it you get the residency and then I would have to um, go to a local um, A.M. Tumento, isn't it, um, and fill in, fill in whatever documentation they, they specify? Yeah. Yeah. So, Monica, do you, do you want to answer the Padron question? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, you know, any person living in Spain is it's required to register, you know, on the fence of the Padron. So everybody can do before the, the, to get residency, to apply for residency. And I suggest or advise to do before just arrive to Spain because you need, you know, to deposit sale or rental contract. So with passport, uh, utility bill, uh, contract, you can't get the, you know, the, uh, the, the padron, the register on the, the padron. So it's good because you can get many, many advance, you know, in the local things. And then, and then to, 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 how do you register then, um, Monica? And, 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 and we, can, we, can, we can help people register on the padron, but actually it's something that basically is quite a simple process. That they, that they can do themselves, can't they, Monica? What, what documents do they need to take? Yeah, yeah. you need to, to complete the form that, you know, in the, you know, in the town hall, they give you and explain how to do, but it's quite simple. And uh, you have to, uh, to, to bring with you the passport, a, a original and copy. If you, if you have an NIE number as well, yeah. if you haven't got yeah. no problem, uh, you need the tip of sale, because if you are an owner and you have a tip of sale, uh, not as simple from the register. Copy as simple. You... Co see, copy as simple. Not as simple from the register. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Update. You have to, you know, maybe uh, one or two weeks before the application. Uh, you know, because uh, they want to know that you, this property is still belong to you. Do you know what I mean? Okay. okay. Yes, yes, yes. I have all that. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, no, and that, that's, that's something we can certainly, we can apply. If you send us a copy of your deed, then we can, uh, using the land registry details, we can apply for a, a copy, a nota simple for you, which is basically a land registry search. Okay, I've got all these details actually uh, somewhere. Um, 
So, but it wouldn't hold me up applying for the residency through you. So I can go through the residency process. And then when I'm in Spain next, I just pop along to the town hall and, and fill in the form and give them the, the relevant documents. Uh, absolutely. So, so in, in effect, what, what we do, you, you know, go on, go online, go yep. on, go on to our getspanishresidency.com, yep. complete the application form, and then we'll contact you with the documents that we'll require. Yep. You send those documents to us. And then, for example, in your case, we, we would we'd contact the town hall and find out exactly what will be required uh, at, at, at the local town hall for the Padron. Okay. Um, and we can all, if, if an appointment is, is necessary, we can set that appointment for, uh, for you. So, so that, what's really important is you, you, can, you can prepare all of this before yep. you come out to Spain. So when you, you Spain. come out to Spain, we can just go bang, 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 Absolutely. Padron, Perfect. online yep. appointment, and, and off you go to the online appointment and get that. And just, just to give you an idea, Paul, yep. Um, you know, Monica acted for clients. Uh, we acted for clients who bought who bought a house in um, in Barcelona in the, in the Barcelona region. And mm. We applied for their NIE in residency in the same day, um, and that just goes to show you how different the, the authorities are. Yeah, <laughs> it's all uh, music to my ears. Okay, brilliant. So but yeah, it's, it's important to do all the preparatory work. So let's let's yeah let's have a let's have a separate conversation about that. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, you know, the one consistent thing about Spain is sometimes it's inconsistency. Yeah, yeah I'll uh, keep that as the mantra then. <laughs> yeah. Many, many, next question. This one is, a, is another question for you, Monica. Um, if I want to, um, if I want to obtain health care uh, via the, the Spanish health system, and go through the Convenio Especial scheme. How can I? How can I do that? Um, yeah, if you have, a, as you say, if you have not managed to obtain the help covered by, you know, by forms one because you are a pensioner, or because you are not, you are not being employee or self employed. Uh, if you have a padron for more than one year, you can obtain the health care forms uh, from the. Spanish Public Health Authority. Just, just sign up to the Convenio Especial. You know, you have the, 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 the forms and applications, and you have to uh, accompany it with some documents. But the most important thing is you need to be one year in the Padron, register on the Padron, more than one year, 12 months and one day, but no legs. But you know, this is in Andalusia. In another uh, areas of Spain, uh, even uh, required to have the residence before, even to have the padron to can't get or obtain the convenio especial. So in, in Andalusia, it's good because if you want to apply for residency and you cannot get the, uh, the uh, private uh, health insurance because you have any problems, you after one year with a padron you can't get the convenience special and to get residency as well and you know this convenience special involves making a monthly payment for people under the age of 65 of 50 euros and 157 for those over that age so it's not bad it's, you know um and you need the register uh, for this is in person you have to bring with the original and copy of all documents you know in this in, in malaga where i usually to accompany to the clients you know uh, is in the calle, uh, calle cordoba no, in malaga um and it's take about two months more or less and you get the you know the uh the right to uh, to 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 have the the health you know um, the health cover. Mm -hmm. I've got a question for Melanie. Um, it's it's about the financial status. So how much money um, will an individual have to have um, to prove that um, that they have sufficient financial resources to live in Spain? Okay, I think this is one of the the biggest inconsistency across Spain in terms of the, the proof of financial resources that you need when you apply for your residency. Um, and I think this has been a huge cause of, of confusion as well across Spain with people applying for residency. So if, for example, if we go to, if you apply in Alicante, 
they, from the 1st of March, they actually increased the amount of financial resource you need to prove per person to 9,000 euros minimum. Um, and that needs to be proved uh, in a Spanish bank account and it needs to be held in that Spanish bank account for three months. So, so the requirements that say for Alicante are totally different to say uh, San Carola or, or Torre de Mar, where if you've purchased a property, then you not only needed the updated land registry search, we touched on that earlier, the Nota Simple, and you can show that as proof of, of, your, of your financial resources. If you just be aware, I think we had this. If you if the property you purchased the property in only one of your names, so if you're married and you the property has been purchased in only one of your name, then that will only be able to take into account for one of you that's applying. So the other person that's applying will need to provide bank statements to prove that they have enough financial resources to live in Spain. Um, the, in general, in the Malaga province, uh, the, the amounts that they're looking for are between nine, th the equivalent of 9,000 uh, and just over two th uh, 10,000 per, per year. Um, and on average, if you are providing um, bank statements, on average, they are, they're looking for about six months bank statements to, to actually prove the, 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 financial, the financial resources. But every, everybody applying, every single person that applies for, for residency, it is looked at on an individual basis, um, depending on their, their, their circumstances, depending on whether they're retired, um, or whether they're, 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 they're under the age of 65 and not working here. So it just depends um, on, on the individual and if they've got any dependents as well. Um, and also, if you, I mean, I mean for example, one a great inconsistency as well is Tenerife, uh, where you only need to uh, prove in excess of 5,500 euros per person in a Spanish bank account. So obviously, it's, it's that the cost of living is cheaper in Tenerife. That's all I can kind of assume, assume from that one there. But um, it is advisable. We do advise you to, you know, don't, these are the minimums. So do do try and show as much as, as you can. Um, and just, I will say, before the lockdown, Valencia decided to increase the amount to 30,000 per person because they wanted to show proof for the full five years of residence. So, um, so, so Valencia already started to put up the amounts um, of, of proof of financial resources. So there's great, inconsistency um, in terms of the financial resources required depending where you live, where, you, where, where you're applying. And that's not just consistency in the amount, it's inconsistency in whether it's an overseas bank statement, whether that's a UK, Canadian, US, it's an overseas bank statement, or whether it's a Spanish bank statement they want to see. And there's also inconsistency whether or not they want the bank statements translated uh, or not so so but what's most important is that we do cover across Spain so we we know these inconsistencies um, so once we do know where you're applying your 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 personal circumstances then we can actually confirm the exact requirements um, and we also keep up to date on on the requirements such as what I said to you about Alicante changing changing the requirements without any notice on the 1st of March. So would have been unlucky for somebody who, who, who was actually had, a, had an appointment probably on the, on the 2nd of March. So they would have needed more requirements. Okay, thank you, Manny, for that. I think I'm just gonna squeeze in one last question and that's for Anthony, because this is something that really comes up quite a lot, Anthony. Um, um, and ba basically, Anthony from GPS Insurance Services, they provide, um, you, you provide quotes for cover, but quotes to cover for, for basically people who apply for residency and tend to be under the age of 65. Now, I'm amazed that people say they apply for quotes from UK providers and find that they're very expensive and, and, and put off residency because they think, oh, it's just gonna be too expensive. But actually, Anthony, 
Spanish health care insurance, you know, is it is it cheap? Is it expensive? What what are the kind of costs? What what are people looking at if they're applying for residency and they take out private medical cover in Spain? Okay, obviously it, it comes down to the age. So is it expensive? No. Um, give you some examples. The the premiums I'm talking about what they start from. The premiums start from four hundred and eighty nine euros up to the age of fifty five. For and then 587 up to the age of 60 and 783 up to the age of 65. Now these these rates are based on a clean health statement. Um, however, if you don't have a clean health statement, they would only rise to 979 euros without without the offer rates. Um, what's important, we also have policies that, that cover clients age 66 and over. Um, because a lot of insurers will have a cut off, especially in the UK at the age of 65. And then these premiums are, are calculated on a case by case basis. Okay. okay. So Anthony, basically yeah. someone, so, someone with, with not such a good clean state of health, which yeah. could be a lot of us after lockdown, uh, having eat, eaten and drunk far too much. Um, basically you're looking at about a thousand euros a year. Correct. Correct, Alex. You've hit the nail on the head there. Yes. So that, that's quite that's quite reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Well, listen, um, thank you ever so much, everyone, for, for um kind of joining us on the call today. Um thank you, Anthony from GPS. Thank you, You're Melanie, welcome. Debbie, Patricia, thank you, Ali. If you've got any other questions that you'd like us to answer, please go onto the website, legalservicesinspain.com. Uh, and, and, and send a contact us on the contact form, which is inquiries at legalservicesinspain.com. Um, I'd also like to thank Monica, uh, who we couldn't see today, but, um, but we'll, we'll sort her camera out for her next time. Um, and, um, and thank you very much, everyone, for, for joining. And as I said, if you've got any other questions, please let us know and um, keep looking at our Facebook page for further events.